To find out exactly what the 243 Winchester cartridge is, we're going to talk to the man on the street. I took my first deer with 243 when I was just 12 years old. Remington 700, given to me by my daddy. I love that rifle, still got it up on the wall, and I take it down every so often when it's time to go on a good hunt. If I want something with low recoil, good flat trajectory, I really can't miss with that thing. Oh heck yeah, everybody thinks 223, 22, 250, but 243 Winchester, you get those middleweight bullets, it's gonna fight the wind even better. It's gonna make it a lot easier to hit that little guy and just spray his guts for the next 25 yards. Oh heck, it was about 10 years ago I made the switch from 308 to 243 for the long stages. 308 to find cartridge, but 243 you get less wind, you get less drop, you get less recoil, and you just get on target a whole lot easier. And heck, I still use 243 when I'm not using 6 Dasher or 6XC. Well, traps are boring. I like to get out with a 243 rifle. It has a really flat trajectory, hits them really hard, and the recoil is so low that I can pretty much stay in the scope and start to take out the sounder one by one. 6mm Creedmoor. Yes, yeah, so I would be glad to tell your audience the full history of the 6mm BR cartridge. What? 243? Nope, never heard of it. 6 arc. I can never be quite sure where the coyotes are going to come out. It could be from behind this 75 yard hill, it could be a thousand yards away. And so that's why I want something with a nice flat trajectory. I want it to buck the wind really good and I want it to hit them hard when it arrives. 243 WSSM. No, just kidding. I didn't do that one. Pew, 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 pew. Tink, 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 tink. Skitter, 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 skitter. Paper punch. Well, that was clear as a Biden speech. I think the one thing I took away from that was that it is a flat shooting cartridge, and it sounds like it's been used for a lot of stuff. Let me tell you my own story about 243 Winchester. This is my rifle back here. It's called Telekinesis. You've seen this before. I've done some accuracy testing. I've shot eggs at 300 yards with it. Now, this is a heck of a rifle. But way back in the day when this was brand new, it was still wearing the original plastic stock. Uh, it, it had a, a Mueller varmint scope on top. Everything was just kind of new and fresh about it. The very first practical thing that I did with it was go out prairie dog shooting with my father-in-law. And it's actually the very first center fire kill that I've ever had. Uh, I still very clearly remember it. I had my rifle all lined up. I had the scope all zoomed in. And I think I hit a prairie dog at about 150 yards. And I just remember, you know, that little uh, shove that you get from this. And, you know, it was just enough to knock my eye out of the, uh, the eyepiece so I couldn't see what was going on. But my other eye picked up this prairie dog just spiraling through the air. And I just busted up laughing. I know that I must have scared off everything else if the shot didn't, but I just couldn't help myself. It was so darn funny, and it's, it's still one of my favorite things to do. Uh, prairie dog shooting is just an absolute blast, and I recommend it if you have some in your area. But as you heard from our men on the street, a lot of people don't think of it that way. They think of it as a deer cartridge. And I used to get some raised eyebrows when I would talk to ranchers saying, hey, can I shoot your prairie dogs? And they'd ask, yeah, what are you shooting? 243 Winchester? Isn't that a bit much? But let's talk about exactly what 243 Winchester is. First off, it's an old cartridge. This is back from, I think, 1955. Uh, and what somebody did is they just very simply took 308 and necked it down to a six millimeter bullet size. So here's big old 308 right here. And then, yeah, all you have to do is just crush that neck down, pop in a six millimeter bullet, and then you have something that's really special. It's still operating at high pressures, just a little bit lower than 308. And you're gonna be running uh, some, some of those smaller projectiles that are gonna be anywhere from 55 to 100 grains usually. And now you can get up into 115s and it's just gonna have a really long bullet, it's going to have a very high ballistic coefficient, and it's gonna be moving out really darn fast. So you have something that is extremely flat shooting at some of your closer distances, and then even at some of those longer ones, you're going to, just because of that high ballistic coefficient, you're going to get very little wind drift, and you're going to get a really good trajectory. Out to a thousand yards, for example, 243 Winchester can pretty handily beat 308 Winchester, even with some good bullets, in both wind uh, drift and trajectory. 
If you start with the lightest six millimeter bullets, that's going to be probably a 55 grain varmint bullet. You're gonna be moving that sucker out at about 4,000 feet per second. And it's gonna have an extremely flat trajectory within very close distances. So if you know you're gonna be hitting things maybe no farther than 300 yards out, you're gonna have very little wind drift. You're gonna have an extremely flat trajectory. It's gonna be like a laser beam of death. And that's how I used to think of telekinesis here, especially with those 75 grain bullets, that it was just a laser beam. I could, you know, just put it on the target and it would explode. Uh, as you start to get into some of the longer distances though, and you want to be able to beat the wind and have a flatter trajectory kind of on the longer end, then you're going to get into the 87s, the 90s, the 100 grain bullets, and then up into the 103s, 105s, 108s, and the, the 115s. And you're still going to be able to move those out at about 3,000 feet per second. And one of the really cool things about this great trajectory and its ability to defeat the wind, it's going to recoil a lot less than 308 here. Uh, this is a great cartridge for people that are on the smaller side. It's the first deer rifle for a lot of uh, children and teenagers. Uh, you know, when a dad's looking at his kids and thinking, okay, I want to take him out hunting this year. What am I going to put him behind? Um, yeah, it's usually going to be 243. That's the traditional choice. Like I've alluded to, you have a very flexible range of bullets in the six millimeter size. You're going to have everything from those 55s that are frangible, designed to expand very rapidly, up through the 115 grain D tacks. I think there might be a 118 now. Uh, so you get these, you know, really long target bullets. Uh, now. You're gonna have a lot of choices when it comes to you know what kind of animals you're hunting, but I will say one thing, on the six millimeter side, we're still kind of lacking on the defensive end. So if you're looking for an FMJ, I think there are maybe a couple options out there, but not much. And you're not gonna get a lot of the specialty sort of ammo that you're gonna get with 308, but we'll talk about more of that here in a sec. As you start to get into the heavier end of the six millimeter bullets, they're gonna start increasing in length and getting more and more ballistically efficient. This is a 90 grain AccuBond with a boat tail. And this is from uh, Ammo Inc. right here. This is the American Hunter line. This is a Jeff Ranload. And uh, yeah, this is a 90 grain bullet. And this is going to be more ballistically efficient than the 308 150 grain that you see right here. This has the same kind of bullet. It is a Nosler AccuBond with a boat tail. But because of that larger frontal area on 308, uh, this is just not going to have the same trajectory, especially as distances increase. Here's a 108 grain ELDM from Hornady. This has a 0.526 G1BC or a 0.27 on the G7 scale. In order to find a 308 bullet that's going to match it, we're gonna have to step up considerably up to 168 grain ELDM. So here we have a ballistic coefficient that's nearly the same. So we have 0.523 and 0.263. But how does it all stack up? What does it actually look like when you're trying to make a hit at a particular distance? Why would people want to choose 243? Why do they consider it to be one that's easier to get on target than a bunch of other very popular cartridges out there? Well, we're going to take a look at the chart and uh, see where these are actually hitting, what their actual trajectories are like. And I got to say that this first chart is a bit of a mess. Uh, we have six millimeter Creedmoor compared against 243 Winchester. We have 6.5 Creedmoor and we have 308. Now I've picked a handful of loads kind of across the scale, uh, mostly on the heavier end to see where these things are gonna hit at different distances. And yeah, we have all kinds of crisscross. This is a mess. So we're gonna have to go to uh, a little summary of data so you can get a better indication of what things will actually do at different distances and where you may wanna pick one cartridge over the other. The data that I've pulled for this chart is all off Hornady's website. I decided to try to get the best apples to apples comparison that I could. So I wanted to find a company that had a broad range of weights and uh, different types of bullets, uh, or at least ones that were gonna be really similar to each other. And so, yeah, I went with uh, Hornady. If you go with Winchester or Federal, you're not gonna lose anything. Those guys are awesome. I'm just saying that this one has a very broad spread. Starting on the extreme light end with 243 Winchester, we have a 58 grain 
Wolverine VMAX. It has a low BC, but it, as you can see, it has a very high muzzle velocity. Anything that is beneficial to you on this chart, I have marked in orange. So if you see a bold orange, that means it's good. If we're starting to get into the blues, that means that that's probably not something that you want. So we have a very high muzzle velocity, but also the lowest recoil. So this could be a great one for taking your kid out to the range and getting them used to the rifle. This one is not going to kick much at all. The next column is a little bit weird, so let me explain it. I wanted to figure out at what distance a bullet was going to fall below the 700 foot-pound energy mark. So that's going to be the retained energy that it has when it strikes a target. So the farther out that is, the better. The closer it is, the worst. And you can see that the worst one that we have is this 58 grain load. At only 375 yards, it's gonna fall below 700 foot-pounds. And to let you know what that's all about, 700 foot-pounds is still gonna be considerably more than you're gonna get with a 357 Magnum bullet coming out of an eight inch barrel, uh, you know, which is plenty for killing a deer. Um, you know, you can get maybe into the higher 500s, maybe around 600, somewhere in there. So I picked 700. It's going to be a kind of a step above. It's just an arbitrary mark. But let's see how we do at 300 yards. What kind of drop we're dealing with, what windage, and uh, how much energy and velocity we have. As you can see, that 58 grain bullet has the best drop of any of these at 300 yards. It only comes in a little bit over a half milliradian, so that's going to be easy to get on target. However, it has the worst windage. Uh, this one is going to be blown off course very easily by a 10 mile an hour wind and it's just going to get worse as things get more distant as you'll see the retained energy at 300 yards is the worst 922 compared to all the others that jump up considerably and its velocity is still really screaming out there 2676 feet per second now at a thousand yards we start to get the real tail of the tape here uh, the drop is not bad because it got a really good head start. That bullet had you know, a, a good amount of time to try to you know, get out there as fast as it could. And it's kind of middle of the pack right now. I think it's actually exactly middle of the pack as far as drop goes. As far as windage goes, it is way, way, way worse than all of the others. It's a light bullet. It's going to be easily blown around by the wind. It kind of doesn't matter how quickly it gets there. Our energy is significantly lower than anything else. And our velocity is also significantly lower than everything else. It ran out of steam a long time ago. Now that I've shown you one line in the chart, we're not going to go through every single one of these. Instead, we're going to kind of look at the highlights and the midtones and see where some of these cartridges are really going to work and what might work for you. And if you want to really get down into the data and see these exact details, I'm going to put a link in the description below. You can download this chart, check it out for yourself, and see if one of these cartridges might work out well for you and whatever you intend out of the range or out in the woods. Now, like I mentioned, we're hunting for orange here. We want to find those high values and we want to be able to balance those against the blues as well. Some of these might be uh, kind of polar opposites. One might have a lot of energy, but a bad trajectory. And we're going to try to balance all this out. The one that I'm going to point out straight up here, the best looking cartridge is going to be a 6.5 Creedmoor with that 147 grain bullet. Check that out. You have a very high ballistic coefficient and it's going to have uh, the longest distance by far, 1,100 yards of when you finally kind of fall off that 700 foot-pound energy mark. That means you're gonna be able to put a really good hurting on an animal, uh, even at some extreme long distances. And I know that we have lots of folks that won't do that, but uh, you know, if you got a hog or a coyote at a long distance, you're really gonna uh, be able to hit it very hard. It's 300 yard windage is the best of the pack. We have really good retained energy at 300 yards. And like I mentioned, everything gets better the farther out you go. So at a thousand yards, you just have excellent drop in wind drift. Uh, you have very high energy and very high velocity. So that's kind of the winner overall. But don't forget the blue. Let's take a look at the low lights. As you can see, this has one of the lowest initial velocities of all of these. And it's going to have not so flat a trajectory in the short range. So if your game is only 200 to 300 yards out and you want to be able to easily get on target, I mean, this is still good, but there are certainly better options. You'll be able to hit your target more easily with some of these others. 
as you can see, it does have really good wind drift, but the drop, eh, not so much. You kind of have to wait till things get a little farther away for this one to work the best. The 140 grain BTHP, 6.5 Creedmoor load, as you can see, is almost as good. It still has some really good stats. There's a lot of orange going on in there, just not quite as good as that 147. But let's jump down to 308. Let's take a look at one of the kind of polar extremes and why some people may choose 243 Winchester or 6mm Creedmoor over this one. You can see that we have the highest retained energy at 300 yards. This one's going to hit hard. So if you're looking for just a deer cartridge at some of the, you know, kind of medium ranges, you can see that this one is an excellent choice. It's going to have considerably more energy uh, than a bunch of the others that we have up toward the top of the chart. It also has really good wind drift because of those heavier bullets, they just don't get blown around as easily. It's drop, not so good. So even at 300 yards, we're really starting to lose uh, that competitive edge when it comes to its drop. It's not going to be as easy to get on target as some of these other lighter, faster ones. It's going to carry that energy, as you can see in the 700 foot-pound uh, threshold that I have. It's going to carry it out to nearly a thousand yards, so that's not too shabby at all. As we get out to a thousand yards, we still have plenty of orange here. The drop, as you can see, is the worst but we still have pretty good wind fighting and we have good energy and we have good velocity. We probably have another couple hundred feet before these go transonic and fall out of the sky. No, as we found out in our testing, these usually do not destabilize as they hit the transonic zone. It kind of depends on what twist rate you have. Now backing this up just a little bit, you'll see that the recoil is definitely the highest on the 308s. We are moving a much heavier bullet at pretty decent speeds and it's going to hit quite a bit harder. Actually double what we're going to get with a lot of these 243 Winchester loads. So that's something to think about. If you are concerned about recoil, it's time to start looking at some of those lighter ones up toward the top of the chart. Let's see where we just have kind of a good average of things. You'll notice that with some of the heavier 243 Winchester loads, uh, they don't really ever dip into the blue on anything. They just kind of maintain this middle of the road sort of attitude. And in some cases, they actually kind of have a good bit of orange going on. Like the 105 grain Hornady BTHP that I've loaded up and used in uh, telekinesis right here. This is one that's going to start out kind of fast. Okay, it still has orange going on. It has low recoil, that's great. 750 yards until it hits that 700 foot pound uh, threshold. All right, not bad. It's 300 yard drop is only one milliradian. Fine. It has really good windage, only a half milliradian at, in a 10 mile an hour crosswind at 300 yards. It's energy starting to drop off, but eh, it's not too shabby. And it's velocity still cruising along pretty well. And then it gets even better as it gets out to a thousand yards. The thousand yard drop is looking pretty good. It's windage is excellent. Only a bit over two milliradians in a 10 mile an hour crosswind. That is not bad at all. Retained energy, okay. It's kind of like a light 357 Magnum load, something with a kind of a lighter bullet and its velocity is actually quite good. This bullet is still well supersonic and it's probably going to be supersonic until about 1300 yards. Now right in the middle of this chart, I'm seeing a good swath of orange, something that looks like it's going to be a really good competitor for that kind of heavier load for 243 Winchester. Six millimeter Creedmoor is a direct competitor to 243 Winchester. So if you have 308 neck down to six millimeter in order to make 243 Winchester, then six millimeter Creedmoor is just gonna be 6.5 five Creedmoor essentially neck down to a six millimeter as well. So these are going to have similar case capacities are going to have very similar performance. And as you can see here, in some ways, it's really going to edge out 243. If we take a look at the same bullet, the 105 grain Hornady BTHP, um, that's going to be this one that starts with a, a muscle velocity of 2960. So it's moving out just below 3000 feet per second. It's a good velocity, low recoil, just like we saw before. It's stepping up its 700 foot pound threshold just because of that little bit of extra speed. It's gonna have just a little bit more distance before it drops off at 700 foot pounds. And it's gonna be just slightly better than that 243 load in uh, all of the captions that you see here. So it's still gonna have a really good wind fighting ability both at 300 yards and at 1,000. It's still going to have one of the best drops. And you can see that if we get into one of the, the higher BC bullets, one of the ELDMs, that uh, uh, this one is actually the best as far as drop goes at 1,000 yards. And we're doing really well on wind drift. 
muzzle velocity is still high. So just like 243 Winchester, it's probably going to go subsonic somewhere past 1300 yards. Now this chart is very useful. It's gonna tell you a lot about what these cartridges will behave like out in the field. So if you know what kind of animals you'll be hunting or whatever it is you're gonna be doing, targets you'll be knocking down, uh, yeah, this will tell you a lot. But there are some other considerations that we need to look at when we're talking about comparing these cartridges uh, because there are some other very big differences that I've put in my notes right here. The first thing that we need to think about is what rifles are actually available and what they're set up like. 243 Winchester has some limitations. Back when it was initially developed, it was designed to be very flexible, one of the most flexible cartridges that's actually out on the market, uh, handling everything from those 55 grain bullets all the way up to 100 grain. And that's really the limitation, 100 grains. You're going to have your soft point and spire point bullets like this one that, yes, they're pretty long, but they're nowhere near what we're getting into now with these very low drag bullets, uh, these ones that are designed for match shooting, for target shooting. If you want to nudge this up just a couple of grains, maybe to a 103 or a 105 grain VLD, those bullets are too long and they're not going to stabilize in most of the 243 Winchester rifles out there. Now you can go around and check with the different manufacturers, see what kind of twist rates they have now. But for the most part, it used to be one in 10. A lot of people moved to one in 9.25 so that they could very easily stabilize this bullet, this 100 grain. But that's still kind of the limit of what you're gonna find out there. If you want to stabilize the 105 grain load that I had in my chart here, you're actually gonna need a different twist rate and possibly you know, a little bit longer barrel would help as well. This rifle, Telekinesis, I tried to stabilize those 105 grain bullets uh, for a good long while when I had a different barrel on here, the original Savage barrel. And it had you know one in 9.25 twist. Some people said that it worked for them. It did not work for me. I couldn't do it. I had to upgrade to this one in eight twist barrel from preferred barrel blanks. Uh, this has, yeah, a one in eight. You can get a one in seven. A one in seven or one in eight twist is perfectly adequate for those big heavy bullets. Now, thankfully, Savage is very easy to swap the barrels on. All you have to do is just turn this barrel nut off and you can put a new barrel on. Like I said, this is from Preferred Barrel Blanks and yeah, this was a very easy swap to make. But if you're talking about a factory rifle, that's probably not gonna be the case. That's where we get into one of the great benefits of six millimeter Creedmoor. It was specifically designed to handle these new, long, very low drag bullets. It's going to have a little bit of a longer throat in addition to that higher twist rate. So you're gonna be able to push the bullet out of the case just a little bit and not take up so much space uh, that could be used for powder. If you're looking for a rifle you can just take off the shelf and take out to a match near you, probably six millimeter Creedmoor or 6.5 Creedmoor is going to be a better choice than uh, 243. Now there are some other considerations if you're looking at the rest of the world of shooting. First off, let's talk about factory ammo. And we're not talking about boutique stuff. Yes, you can always find weird boutique ammo and you'll probably end up paying through the nose for it. But I'm talking about just going to your local sporting goods stores and finding the ammo that you need for whatever situation you're about to get into. Um, so first off, six millimeter Creedmoor. It's not really considered a varmint cartridge and you're gonna have a hard time finding some lighter loads for it. Hornady does have a 75, or no, excuse me, an 87 grain uh, VMAX option. It's actually in that chart that I put up. Um, and so, yeah, you'll be able to use that on prairie dogs and all that. But if you want to get into those even lighter bullets, like the 75, the 55, uh, you're going to have to hand load that yourself. So as far as factory ammo goes, not so much. It's really, most of what you're going to find is going to be target ammo. 6.5 Creedmoor, same thing. You're going to find lots of target ammo and you'll be able to find some hunting loads now for medium game, but it's really not a varmint cartridge. About the lightest load that I've seen so far has been, I think, 90 grains, which is still a pretty heavy bullet and it starts to get less ballistically efficient, so not the greatest if you're gonna go out for prairie dogs. 308 Winchester, also not considered a varmint cartridge. I actually have seen some varmint loads for this. Since there is such a wide variety of bullets you can get for 308, you might, well, okay, again, we're, we're getting into boutique ammo, so you might be able to find some, uh, some varmint loads like with a 110 grain bullet. But yeah, again, not the easiest thing to find. You're gonna find ammo for targets and you're gonna find ammo for medium game. 
and that's probably going to be about it and some of your heavier game as well because it does have uh, quite a bit of punch to it 243 Winchester, on the other hand, if you go to this store, you're probably going to find varmint ammo and you're going to find deer ammo. So, you know, kind of flipping the script from 6mm Creedmoor, you're not going to find target ammo. You're not going to be able to get those VLDs because they know that your rifle probably can't handle them and they would receive lots of customer complaint calls. Now, hand loading. This is a big deal. I have been hand loading 243 Winchester since the moment I first got this rifle. Um, I was really excited to see what I could do with different types of bullets. At the time, you couldn't really find varmint ammo on the shelves. It was the weirdest thing, even though it was designed to be able to be really flexible like that. Everybody just wanted 100 grain hunting ammo, and that was pretty much all that you could find. Uh, so for me, I wanted to get into some of those varmint bullets and see what I could do on prairie dogs. And uh, yeah, it worked well. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but six millimeter Creedmoor, first off, because of 243 Winchester and how many options there are, because it is such a well-established cartridge, you're gonna have a really good bullet selection and you're gonna have lots of powders you can work with as well. Brass is gonna be a little bit trickier. You probably don't have too many sources for that still. And uh, there's gonna be some load data, but it's not gonna be just, you know, full up in the books like I have up here. 6.5 Creedmoor is starting to get a lot more data. There's a lot of powder available for it, but this is one where bullets are actually pretty limited. We'll see as this starts to get more acceptance, you know, people are using it more for hunting, more for, you know, maybe the more military start to use it. Then maybe we'll see some more interesting bullets. Um, but still, brass, you don't have too many sources, and uh, there, there's a pretty good amount of load data, but not as much as 308 Winchester. This is actually a hand-loaded 308 right here. Uh, this is using the Federal Edge TLR. It's a bonded bullet with a clear blue tip. This thing is super cool, and this is going to hit like a freight train. I think this is the 175 that I have in my hand right here. I have 175s and 200s. And uh, yeah, these have pretty good exterior ballistics and they hit really, really hard. But that's one of the coolest things about 308. You have tons of bullets of all kinds of different weights. You have specialty bullets, like ones that explode and you know, uh, like you have your, your phosphorus tracers and all that. Uh, yeah, tons of brass. You have all kinds of options like small uh, rifle primer brass if you want to get into you know, maybe extreme small uh, standard deviations of velocity. And then you get into 243 Winchester, which is another great hand loaders cartridge. Like I mentioned, we have a pretty darn good bullet selection. Pretty much all the major manufacturers make a, a spread of bullets for those. Uh, there's lots of brass out there. And one of the coolest things is that you can very easily make 243 as long as you have 308 or 7.62 by 51 brass. I've actually done this myself. It's a pretty cool process. You just neck it down by steps until you get down to 243, uh, ream it out a little bit. It takes a little bit of work, but you can do it. So if ammo does dry up, I still have quite a bit of old 308 brass that I can turn into 243 if I want. Because this cartridge is so old, we have tons of load data and you're gonna find it in every book out there. Uh, there's lots of powder available, just a lot of options when it comes to 243. Feeding is another thing to think about. Overall, they're probably all pretty good. 308 Winchester is the easiest to feed, so if you're more concerned about reliability, uh, this one is gonna feed really well in all the different kinds of rifles that this can be set up for. We're talking about semi-autos, lever actions like the BLR or the Savage uh, 99. Um, yeah, you have bolt action rifles, all kinds of things that are set up for 308, and this one tends to run really well. It's not going to jam up very much. 243 Winchester, um, I really haven't had many problems. I have jammed it up in this action just by short shucking, um, but just because it is a smaller bullet, it might not feed quite as well sometimes, but overall I would say that all four of these, 6.5 Creedmoor, 6mm Creedmoor, 308, 243 Winchester, they're all gonna feed pretty darn well in whatever you have. Barrel durability is an issue to be thinking about. A 308 barrel is gonna last a really long time. Uh, up, I don't know, maybe 5,000 rounds, 6,000 rounds, and as you start stepping things down to where you have the same powder charge and you're cramming it through a smaller area, that barrel is not going to last as long. A lot of people say that a 243 Winchester barrel or a 6mm Creedmoor barrel is going to last 
I don't know, maybe about 1,500 rounds. And that's for kind of premium accuracy. Things will start to degrade gradually over time. You may still have a good shooter as the, uh, the years wear on and the, the rounds pile up, but just know that it's not going to last nearly as long as 308 or even 6.5 Creedmoor. As far as inherent accuracy goes, there really is something to the sharper uh, shoulder that you're gonna get on 6.5 Creedmoor or six millimeter Creedmoor. Uh, some people say that the burn tends to happen more inside the case. Uh, I don't know, I haven't been in there to find out. It's, it sounds plausible that what's going on, you know, you're getting more of the burn inside there and less in the throat. Um, and because of the way that it burns, it seems like the ones that have the steeper shoulder angles tend to have a little bit more inherent accuracy. I know that for myself, I've had to work a little bit extra hard on 243 to get it precise. Once I get it there with my hand loading, then it's going to be precise, as precise as anything else that I have um, you know, here in my safe, any of the highfalutin cartridges. It's going to shoot really, really tight groups and actually some of the tightest I've ever shot. But I know that if I mess up a little bit on my load, that it tends to fling them a little bit farther than it would. So compared to 6.5 Creedmoor, I think that it tends to open up a bit more if I haven't optimized my load. In the chart, we talked about energy, but energy is not quite the same same as momentum. So this is something to think about. If your primary use for one of these cartridges is to take out medium or maybe heavier game, you really need to start thinking about the heavier bullets, even if they are less efficient. This 175 grain bullet is going to be leaving the muzzle slower than anything else that we talked about here today, but it's going to retain a lot of not just energy, but after it strikes game, that bullet is going to have tons of momentum and it's going to plow straight through and it has the best chance of getting me an exit wound on the other side. I know one of the complaints that um, some folks say about 243 Winchester is that you're not necessarily going to get an exit on the other side of a whitetail. It kind of depends on your distance to that deer, how far away you were when you took the shot, and it's going to depend on bullet construction as well but it just doesn't have a whole lot of mass to plow through. Those of you guys that saw the 350 Legend deer hunting uh, video that I put out just a short while back, that 180 grain bullet isn't moving very fast at all. It isn't very efficient, but it does a really good job of exiting the other side. And I got lots of comments in the video, people saying the exact same thing. They tended to get exit wounds and it was easier to track down deer that they had shot. There's one other consideration that I haven't really talked about, I don't think in any of the other cartridge comparison videos that I've done, and that's the fun factor. It's really true that some cartridges are just more fun than others, and I can't exactly say why. Uh, for me, I think it's coupling low recoil with a lot of good effects downrange. Uh, I just know that I tend to gravitate toward uh, 22 250 is just a whole lot of fun to shoot. You just want to run a lot of ammo through that, uh, you know, blow up oranges and potatoes stuck in the ground. It's really a whole lot of fun. And 243 has a lot of that fun factor. Like I mentioned, when I went out uh, varminting for the first time, uh, and I got that first prairie dog, it was just hilarious. I had just the best time ever, you know, watching these uh, prairie dogs just go flying off in all directions as I hit them. Very low recoil on my end, very high recoil on their end, and there really is just something to 243. I like getting it on the, the bench or, you know, getting down on the ground and knocking down silhouettes with it. It's just, I don't know, somehow more fun than a lot of the other uh, heavier hitting cartridges. I, can't exactly say why. Maybe it's that laser beam of death uh, sort of factor to it, that super flat trajectory. I can very easily get on target. I'm not really concerned about, okay, you know, am I holding my reticle just right? It's more like with that flat trajectory, if I'm at 300 yards, it's like kind of point and click. It's just easy and fun. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. I know I gave you a lot to think about. Uh, there are some wonderful options out there, and I should just go ahead and throw out that whatever you choose, it's not like you're gonna lose anything. Um, you know, as long as you have a pretty good idea in mind of what you're gonna do out in the field, and you pick a cartridge that corresponds to that, you're gonna have a blast. Um, yeah, just, you're not gonna lose picking any of these. For more cartridge comparison videos, you can click the link I'll put up here or down in the description. Uh, I've put together a bunch of these before comparing different 
cartridges that are considered to be competitors. And you can see maybe one of those might work for you for a different situation, like pure deer hunting, varminting, that sort of thing. But thank you to patrons of the Destructive Arts for making this possible. You guys keep the cameras going and the lights on. I appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the Destructive Arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.